What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Shows. Brian, I've purchased three days of Dune Part 2. I had to cancel all three because some, you know, life happens, right? I'm seeing it tomorrow. Uh, I don't have the pleasure of really... Uh, chiming in on what all the the hoopla is about only that it is a masterpiece Brian that's the theme that this movie is a masterpiece that you have to see it in the theaters and this movie is going to blow your mind away and so Brian so we want to hear your non-spoiler review so uh, I went to the 70 millimeter IMAX screen. I went with a friend um, who had never been to that particular theater uh, in my town. It's a big movie. He's actually a big comics and, and comic movie, but he'd never seen a movie there. Went on a weekday. And it was sold out, which is always nice. And I will just tell people at home. If you don't see this movie in IMAX and you have IMAX available to you, you have missed out. This, and, and I will tell you, I've seen the movie twice. I've seen it once in IMAX, once not in IMAX. And I have already purchased tickets to see an IMAX two more times <laughs> before it goes. Yeah. Oh, but it is man. so different in IMAX because I was surprised at how much of the film is actually shot using the IMAX camera because you can always tell based mm -hmm. upon the framing, you know what is and what isn't. I did not realize as much of the movie was shot using an IMAX camera as Denny Villeneuve did. There are things you will see on the screen and things you will hear in particular in an IMAX theater that you have never heard or seen in a movie before. That's kind of the best way I can tell you. It may, doesn't mean that you'll be the favorite thing you've ever seen or heard. I just, it's original. The use of sound in this movie is its own character. And we talked about this with the Batman, that the, that was a very distinctive audio track. Not, this, not the mm -hmm. score, the audio track of the movie, mm -hmm. how sound was used. Mm -hmm. This movie functions similar but different. It's like kibbles and bits, but different. It's much louder. It's one, maybe the loudest movie I've ever been to. <laughs> But where it's loud and how it's loud and why it's loud <clears throat> contributes to your experience. And only in IMAX can you actually fully feel the impact of that. The lighting and visuals are ridiculous. And I did read that Villeneuve had, there's several sequences where he pulled like an Inaratu from um, The Revenant where he would mm -hmm. only shoot it with natural light. They were only doing the shots at certain times of day, like over and over again, because the light was the same. You can tell yeah, yeah. it is meant to be visually jarring and it will get you, especially on the big screen where like one minute you're looking at the black and white of the Harkonnens world. And the next minute you're looking at an actual desert sunset. It is crazy what he does with like five neutral colors. <sighs> so if nothing else, you respect the craft because you're like, this looks and feels different. Like this isn't Star Wars. This isn't Marvel. There's nothing silly about this. I am immersed in this other world in this other place that he wants me to be in. Um, it's a two hour and 45 minute movie that feels like half the time. That's it moves almost too fast. Um, I'll get to my one. I have one small critique of the third act, but it's a small one. Um, and then it's a tour de force of like veteran acting talent and like the under 35 best of. I mean, he's got Salome maxed out. He's got Zendaya, excellent performance. He's got Florence Pugh and he's got Austin Butler doing something you've never seen Austin Butler do before. And he does some things, but he- yeah, I, I, I saw on Instagram, in I saw on Instagram a comparison of Heath Ledger and Javier Bardem and him in the middle comparing like who has been the best villain sort of uh, debate. Well, I just, I love it because, you know, he's got those golden boy looks and obviously he played Elvis, which was a biopic. 
but which but he was also the protagonist and the hero and he is full on nasty in this movie as a supporting character and he's loving it you can tell he's just loving being a bad guy and it, it made me just appreciate his range as an actor to say like yeah this guy if he signs up to do anything else in our genre pay attention yeah because he's got he's got it. so you got those four at the younger ages who are as good as any four you're probably going to find working today and then you have i mean javier we mentioned javier bardem he's in this movie he's one of the best parts of this movie he is hamming it up but in a dramatic way he's perfect as one of the leaders yeah. of the fremen perfect and every time he's on screen you want more bardem the action is i feel like when i see movies like this or like what Chris Nolan shoots for action. You just want to send the tape to Disney and be like, come on. Like, I'm not asking you to be this. Just be like 60% of this and we'll be happy. <laughs> like, because this movie is not really meant to be about the action. But the action set pieces all have something in them where you're like, holy I did not see that coming or it's shot in a way that we are just like, that's freaking cool. And that's the best compliment I can give to it. Um, so if I had only one, my one little critique mm -hmm. is that I feel like the final battle is a little short in the sense of what they choose to focus on. I almost feel like Villeneuve <clears throat> was like, teasing me with how good he was going to shoot this like grand scale battle and then didn't really show as much of that as I would have wanted and I I know he said this is the only cut you're ever going to see there's he doesn't do director's cuts but I have to believe there's like another 15 minutes of the, those scenes somewhere on a cutting room floor that I really wish had made it into the final movie um, but the, the effects look great right this is obviously a movie that has a lot of CGI but like when the sandworms are on screen, you think there's a giant creature there. You don't even question for a second that like Chalamet is riding a giant worm. Like it looks like and feels like he is. Let me ask you this. Do you believe that he doesn't do a director's cut because he has the last say of what the cut is? Well, I don't know. I've never heard his reasoning for why he doesn't do it. I think some directors kind of feel like whatever they put their name on is the artistic statement they, they're going to make about it. And they don't care to sort of revisit and retool the project. Now we know like Michael Mann, Zack Snyder, they live in recuts <laughs> and like some better, some worse. But I kind of appreciate the commitment to, I gave the audience what I intended to give the audience. And, and here it is, best I can do. Because he even said there was a, I think it was Tim Blake Nelson, actually, who's the leader in uh, Captain America 4. He was supposed to be in this movie, and he was cut entirely. Because Vilna basically was like, that's it. Like, I couldn't fit. I shot the scenes. The scenes didn't work for my final iteration, so I had to leave the actor out. I understand 100%. If it ain't working, it ain't working. I'm sorry. And the movie has great flow. So that's why I would say, like, you know, I'm asking for the battle scenes, but like, I could be totally wrong. Like, I'm sure Villeneuve has a cut that had those scenes in there. And for whatever reason, he felt like the rhythm didn't quite work. And so he took them out. There clearly is going to be a third. He's already scripted Dune Messiah, which is the novel that follows Dune. The the Because the, the first mm -hmm. two movies are from one book. That book is shorter and not as action heavy. So I'm very curious to see. He, I feel like he's going to have to add more to the third script and film. And so I would suspect this movie will be the best of the three, similar to what we've seen with Dark Knight or Empire Strikes Back, which I think this movie will be the peak. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, Villeneuve's got a great track record of making movies. But in these first two movies, he really had the book to lean on and edit all the way through. And he did tweak some things. But by and large, he's pretty faithful to the concepts of Frank Herbert. The next one, he is going to have to do more of his own heavy lifting. And I, I just wonder if that's going to change um the the flow and the quality just a bit whenever whenever we do get it but who cares it's still going to be a great trilogy uh and the fact that this movie exists following one i would that's the other thing i would say to people at home make sure you watch one soon before you go see this like if you haven't seen one since 2021 when it came out 
pop it in and watch it or, or skim it or, you know, try to watch some of it because it'll get you back in the mindset of where you need to be. I did all the table setting for this movie. I was watching really... it a few days ago with my wife. Yeah. And I feel, I, I saw the re-release in the theater. Um, they brought it back and I was so thankful I did because I was like, oh, I actually got to see it the way he wanted me to see it. Um, and, it and it is different than I saw it on TV, obviously day and date back when. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. So. Where is it at? at the box office doing fantastic so did over 180 million global the first weekend um as of uh we're, we're taping here in the middle of its uh, first full week the box office it's already more than surpassed the total box office from the um from the domestic box office from dune one it's already passed it within the first week um it is tracking if you believe in this stuff i don't know if it'll have quite these legs it is tracking very similar to oppenheimer's box office which obviously wound up just about a billion dollars um and i would say if he pulls that off and if he pulls off anything close to like 700 800 million dollars with this type of movie which is hardcore sci-fi like do not go into this thinking it's going to be like infinity war it's not this is a movie with a lot of politicism, a lot of religion, because that's what the book is. That's why I thought, always thought Dune was an impossible adaptation because the book is so dense and weird and deep. It's not like a crowd pleasing story. And like, you will get to the end of this movie and be like, who am I supposed to root for again? Like, it's kind of that kind of movie. It's like, even the heroes are sort of weird and do weird things that aren't great. And you're like, Chalamet's like, basically i mean spoiler alert like you know the whole like he's the white savior of the fremen but then he's kind of using the fremen for his own purposes like wait should i like this guy like he kind of sucks when it comes to his 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 valuing of of these people of these people's lives he also pulls off i mean they dramatize the scene but i don't want to spoil it but there's a scene between him florence Pugh, and zendaya which is Ah. going to be memed and talked about for a long time as the okay. one of the one of the all-time great movie oh you did not just do that on yeah. screen <laughs> and then dias sells it like there's no tomorrow which is fantastic so five so five stars from me see it as many times as you can and see it in imax at least once that would wow. be wow five stars yeah i think the first one is probably four like three and a half to four like doing one and then i would say this one is it goes up to a five so yeah Yo, if you've seen Dune, let us know in the comment section below. Dune Part 2, let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of it. Have you seen it in IMAX? Um, Can I ask you a question about Chalamet? Sure. Let's put the Chalamet discussion quickly in here. Because talk okay. about a dude who has won. Okay. So Wonka is over $600 million <laughs> global. Yeah, Wonka made more money than Man of Steel or Justice League or any <laughs> Marvel movie outside of Guardians 3 and Wakanda Forever in the past. I just, and now he's got this. And now he has this, which is going to be a front runner for Best Picture next year at the Oscars. So this guy touched, he was the lead in IP for Willy Wonka and Dune. We talk about degree of difficulty. And he's going to walk out of here with two mega hits and critical acclaim as a leading man in those vehicles. And then he dropped the little nugget that even though Leonardo DiCaprio told him under no circumstances do a superhero movie, he opened the door. He opened the door. Yes, he has someone in mind, Brian. Brave and the Bold is sitting there. Can James Gunn talk him into a crazy, whacked out Robin? Because everyone's always wanted him to play Robin anyway. But part of the problem is Robin's not the lead, except he is the lead in that <laughs> movie. Yeah, yeah. And now I know they got Andy Muschietti, and I almost feel like, should they fire Andy Muschietti and see if like someone bigger will do the movie? But you like, You cannot, in my opinion, man, Flashpoint, man. It's like you don't come back from that. You don't take a chance to do something great after giving me that and then having people vouch for it you know if james gunn if they did wind up changing directors or changing writers and it's like i don't know get chalamet as robin and richson as an older bruce wayne i mean who says no can we roll with that and the only reason i say it because that type of robin might be the only type of superhero character he'd sign up for because he's kind of saying i'm only going to do it if the script is just right and the director's right which means he's not doing a cookie cutter yeah right he's not doing but it. that yeah, yeah, yeah. robin if you nailed it the whole point of that character is that he's like part hero part psychotic he's out of control like 
you can do some things as an actor with that iteration. Yeah, man. Just float. It is, is, is there. Is there. Is there. It's there. Just like we've said, Alan Richardson for the longest. This one has just been given to you right there. He opened the door himself for that possibility. He'd be what? 25 ish he'd be around age 25 Perfect. richen is would be like 45 that's exactly what the story yeah. demands yeah a, a, a three a three oh. come on <laughs> nerds report the show goes on yeah!